Okay, we'll call this meeting to order. Just a few seconds, hopefully early, but uh, December 11th, 2019, select board meeting. Our first item on the agenda tonight is a gift from East Hampton Savings Bank. We have two representatives here, Hadley residents, and uh, I, do you guys yes. want to explain? Sure. The donation? Sure. There you go. I don't know where we go. Uh, we have a check here. So I'm the the manager for the uh, branch in Hadley, and um, and Paul is the government banking uh, for East Hampton Savings Bank in Hadley. And um, we're very pleased to announce that um, East Hampton Savings Bank wants to no donate uh, 25000 to the town of Hadley. Okay. This, this is going to be part of our, the projects of the Senior Center, um, uh, the uh, ball fields for Hopkins Academy, and also for the library project. So we have three projects, all very great projects, and we want to participate in all of them. And the uh, ball fields project and the uh, library project will be uh, distributed over two years. $5,000 for two years, and also the remaining $5,000 will be going to the COA, and they decided to buy a giving tree for all the donations that they're going to take. And so we're going to be financing or paying for the giving tree that will be in the new senior center. So it's our way of saying thank you to the residents of the town of Hadley and to the town of Hadley itself for all that they've done for East Hampton Savings Bank for over the past 20 years. Thank you, everyone. Great. Thank, thank you. you. So do we get this to land the train? <laughs> <laughs> do we deposit that at the ranch? I don't think I'm going to run to to deposit it. <laughs> okay. Do you want to go? Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank And now we will move into the consent agenda. We have a warrant, AP 2023V. We have a Chapter 61A, Barstow, right of first refusal and waive 120 day waiting period. We have completion of probationary period, Scott McCarthy. And then we have two uh, police, one retirement, one hiring. I'll, I'll just hold that right now and you can uh, say that, Chief. And then we have a memorandum of understanding with the treasurer. We have a motion. Moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Chief, if you want to. Uh, <coughs> Okay. I uh, I prepared something to read, but I decided that I didn't want to go that route. Um, I've been friends with Ken for a, a very long time, so I'm just going to kind of go off the cuff and figure I'll be able to get through it better that way. Um, Ken has been with, he's been in law enforcement for over 30 years. Um, he came, he went full time with us in 2011. And um, he was promoted to sergeant in 2016. And um, being in policing um, nowadays is not the way that it was when, when he first started. It's not all it's cracked up to be anymore. Uh, so when I look at someone like Ken, um, who stuck it out for as long as some of our officers have been alive, um, <laughs> uh, it's impressive to say the least. Um, Ken is uh, retiring, um, well-deserved retirement. His last work day with us will technically not be until January 3rd. Uh, his last day employed by the town of Hadley will be January 8th. Um, but uh, Kenny likes to go risk life and limb in Florida and play baseball. So um, he's not gonna be around for those dates. So we appreciate the board taking this up early. Uh, and we also have his hope, uh, hopeful replacement here uh, for as far as the officer position goes. Um, we're going to have trouble filling uh, this, the void that he's leaving, um, not just because of you know being a police officer, but also uh, super supervision. Um, as I as I was saying earlier, 
you know, being a police officer nowadays is, is not not what it what it used to be. It's it's much more difficult. It's um, it's a job that no one kind of no one notices all the good that you do until you screw up one time and then uh, everyone knows. It's very similar to how the officials were in the Patriots game last week. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, but that's kind of what um, what makes that's how that I look at it as me being lucky for that part of the job and people like Mitch um, we're lucky because we do get to see the good things um, unfortunately they're not publicized but we get to see uh, people like Ken you know and several of our officers um, doing the good that they do in our community um, you know, just the calm voice on the phone, if it's something, you know, as simple as that, or, you know, helping a, uh, an elderly lady down some icy steps to out to her car, um, like some of our officers did a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so, he is going to be missed, and uh, I would respectfully request that the board approve his well-deserved retirement tonight. <laughs> I'm going to say something a little bit. I'll try to maintain my composure. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of you for letting me serve this community for the last decade. To Chief Mason, Lieutenant Cook, Sergeant Green, and Romano, thank you for allowing me to be part of your management team. You're truly the best. To the officers that are here, mostly to be sure that I'm actually going to retire. <laughs> uh, thank you for everything you do for this department and for the citizens of this great town. To the select board, thank you. Your support of the police department has been outstanding, and I hope that you continue to support this fine organization. I've worked for several area police departments in several communities over the last 35 plus years, and this department is by far the best. Thank you. <laughs> then that leaves me open to say a few words also um, because you said that so I'll try to compose myself okay. also um, having been the representative to the police department it has been an honor to work with you over the last two years that I have um, had the opportunity to you um, certainly are a dedicated police officer. We have high integrity for the department, and it's just been a joy to have you working for us for the town of Hadley. Thank you. So thank you very much. Um, I told the uh, gentleman behind you, Captain um, Cartledge. Cartledge, and his son said I was going to say no, we weren't going to let you retire. But when you work in this line, um, I think everybody, whether it be medical or police, fire, you all deserve to retire at a good time in your life. So I wish you a happy retirement. Thank you very much. And I wish you a better batting average. <laughs> 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 I can still hit the ball. That's I told all my, that matters. I told my kids I stopped playing when I couldn't do it anymore. I can still do it. My wife has other ideas. <laughs> <laughs> and we hope to see you at the senior center. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Who told her to say that? <laughs> <laughs> I'd just like to also point out that now that I'm retiring, that Officer John Robitaille will now be the oldest member of the department, so now he can face all of the same <laughs> guff that I've taken over the last couple of years being the oldest guy. Guff? Guff. 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 Right, be a nice well, so I would make a motion that we accept uh, the retirement of Sergeant Ken Harkwright. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Are you going to say no again? Well, I drive a hard bargain on Thank you. <clears throat> so, um, with that, uh, a vacancy has opened in the agency, not only for the uh, police officer position, but also for a sergeant. Um, sergeant is going to be a little bit more difficult shoes to fill, um, but we had two uh, amazing. Uh, part-time officers that we brought on recently that's Tenzin and, and this is Brendan um, unfortunately well I guess maybe fortunately for me the decision was easy because they're both phenomenal candidates and I would have loved to hire both of them but Tenzin didn't yet qualify for a waiver um, Brendan does 
So um, that's just kind of the way it worked out this time. But if you remember, uh, Brendan uh, was appointed as a special in July. Uh, he currently resides in Greenfield and uh, graduated from high school in Prince Edward Island, Canada. Next month, he will complete his associate's degree in criminal justice from Greenfield Community College. And uh, Brendan completed his reserve police academy training in 2018. And in addition to working uh, as a special for us here in Hadley, he's uh, been working for the Goshen Police Department as a reserve officer since February. He's also worked as a carpenter for uh, Ricky Bermucci Construction and volunteered for Safe Passage as a call taker on their domestic violence crisis line. Uh, following uh, his potential appointment uh, to full-time, he will begin preparations to attend the full-time police academy later this year. Um, so with that, I would like to recommend uh, Brendan Smith as the uh, vacancy after Sergeant Hartwright vacates his position in January and Brendan hits his waiver mark, he would be the replacement. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. You're Tri-board meeting, our fiscal year 2021 discussion. Did we do all of these others? So we yes, we said yes to everything. The consent else. agenda. Yeah, 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 we did all those. Um, I, oh, go ahead. What was was there one you wanted to take back? No, I don't want to take back. Um, you wanted to talk about one. I, I certainly agree. I've heard positive uh, feedback about Scott McCarthy uh, and completing his. Um, probationary period so I wanted to say welcome to him you know after he's finished it um, he's not here this evening uh, but I just wanted to step in and say I think uh, is this the right time to do that maybe sure uh, DPW are looking to put in another foreman I would like us to seriously take a look at not doing that right now I think we need DPW workers more than we need another foreman so I would like to bring that and keep that in the radar for right now instead of having them jump into doing a foreman thing. So, that being said. Okay. And Scott's at a uh, class up in Greenfield tonight working okay. with the, I did see him today and he's happy to be here. Great. He came from Deets and he's liking Hadley so far. So, it's a pleasant day. Great. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and now we can go into the tri board meeting. Got the finance committee meet here, the school school here, um, you know, and the main topic was to discuss how we want to review the budget this year. Last year we all kind of met together and reviewed the budget simultaneously, but um, you know, I don't know if we wanted to do it. I know there was some uh, expression to do it differently this year. You guys wanted to kind of do your own review with the departments or divisions rather than with the select board? So we've done it both ways. Mm -hmm. I mean, so since I've been doing the finance committee, we've done it where we would have uh, meetings with the departments, you would have meetings with the departments. We've done it where just you had us do the meetings and then if there was something special or there was something um, besides for just the straight um, asks, then, then you would want to know what they were and you'd have a special a meeting for just that um, and then last year we did it where you had it and then we were here as well but I think that uh, especially too we are trying to get a couple more people and there are a couple people that are potential um, finance committee people that Randy had he's looking at um, I felt like um, I think it'd be a little bit better if we could have um, because two your meetings are so lengthy and you have so yeah. much more to them than just that one topic where when we would have a meeting, we just have that one topic, <laughs> and that would be it. It's shorter, it's, um, and we just have just that item 
Um, so we would like to do our own. Okay. It's your call. It's your, you know, your committee, so. you know, so. So whether or not you want to do it as well, or if you want us just to report back to you on each one, and if there's a problem, you meet with them at that point. That'll be fine. It's your job. What do you guys want to do? Uh, do you want to meet with each of the divisions to review the budget? Um, there are certain things we wanted to put in the budget this year. Mention of things with the DPW. Um, you know, without that kind of face-to-face -face time with the divisions, you know, we wouldn't be able to interact directly. So I don't know if we'd want to do that. In addition to you know those those department heads or whatnot coming in, having two meetings to go to as opposed. To I one. think if there's something controversial such as. Um, what we're taking on as our agenda this year um, and, and what department that we're focusing on maybe that's the department that we really want to um, get with the nitty gritty on mm -hmm. um, and certainly if some other departments have um, things that they want to bring to us then that would be fine too after they've met with you but I, I see no problem with the finance committee um, a yeah. lot of them are cookie cutter but right. there are some important issues that need to be discussed by both boards you know? sure mm -hmm. I think the uh, the priority department or division uh, budget area I guess you could say for that year should come to us mm -hmm. just to because that way we're focusing on them mm -hmm. but other than that I mean take it and run with it and then if there's anything that but we're talking about a planner I guess that would fall under general government or right. Planner, right. So, so we should talk about, we should talk about that but right. other, other than that the rest of general government should be just same right. as last year pretty much right sure so. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah like I said agree with everything I think you yeah, have department heads if they are asking for something you know and they don't, they don't feel that there's unanimity or whatever then mm -hmm. they should have the opportunity to come and kind of plead their case if you will um, right but yeah I think it makes sense for you guys to okay Okay. And you don't need us to vote on that. We're just saying go. Yeah, we're just it. trying yeah. to figure yeah. out. Yeah, so what we'll our set up a be. meeting and then we'll set up with David and we'll have it uh, do a schedule. A schschedule. And yeah. then after that, we will have some type of meeting where we'll come back and report to you and let you know what's going on and if there is something that needs to be discussed. Okay. I guess. And, and they're, they're open meetings. So, right. Yeah. I mean, in the past. Right. Yeah, when I was over there, it, it wasn't um, unusual for a select board member might go, oh, yeah. you know, <coughs> sit in on the meeting, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah, I was going to say the only thing is we got to make sure that we give you time to do your part far in advance enough so that way we can meet after the fact with you know, right. DPW or whoever and go to our portion, that's all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to ask maybe if you could just give us a schedule when you think you could meet with people and then we can kind of put that into our schedule so that then we can have a, a meeting you know, in advance of town meeting to talk about this and follow up with any issues. Sure, we could probably start it right after with David right after he gets everything. Okay. As soon as he's ready. Yeah, so I'll work with you and we'll come up with a schedule and communicate to the select board on that. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. All right. Well, uh, just a quick logistical question. Do you want to be meeting here? Do you want to meet at the public safety complex? I don't know, but the public safety complex did work well when we did do that. Um, th there's no, we don't have to worry about if there's a um, conflict schedule. Yeah. Since this is the only room, so. Except for the chief. Schedule oh, yes. through the chiefs. <laughs> <laughs> but the chief was always very accommodating. Meantime. <laughs> <laughs> would that be on weekends or would that be during the week? Uh, I'm sure yet, but we would talk to you and make See what it, you know, and, and if it's not available here, of course, but I, I, yeah, I thought it was. I'll work it out. We'll, we'll make the reservations. Okay. We're talking months in advance. I'm sure everything is open at this point. Yeah. You never know. Annie, from a school standpoint, um, I was just going to ask that when you're scheduling for no other reason than the school committee has to has to be the starting point that if I could just weigh in with you and David on what that timeline looks sure. like on our end of course just, that would be great yeah um, yeah that's no problem I just want to make sure that, yeah. that I get my meetings lined up so the oh yeah because you have several eyes too yeah <laughs> and anything new on the school front this year that we can expect or just um, no, there's really nothing going on. No, um, there's <laughs> nothing major. Yeah, nothing yeah. major. 
how you should expect well, them to. Well, they did do the complete redo of the Chapter 70 program. So they did, yeah, uh, although that'll be a phase in over time, and there'll be yes. some benefits to that, and there'll be benefits to the town. The increase has to do with, overall, it's, it's an increase. It's good news. Mm -hmm. um, as I point out all, all the time, I am grateful that the town will see additional revenues, and the entire school department is keenly aware of the fact that this town is incredibly generous and funds the school above required contribution. You folks have been very, very good to the schools. We know that and we appreciate it. And so it could translate into additional revenues into the town side. Um, I don't think it will be a windfall. The changes to the formula uh, are not going to result in a windfall for the town of Okay. given our size and our demographics. Yeah. How is the SBAB going with the locker rooms and things so like that? So we heard today from MSBA, we have not been invited in to, um, and school committee, if you're watching, I was going to email you that today. <laughs> um, we have not been invited in uh, to this round. However, when I spoke, the last time I spoke with MSBA, they said nobody gets invited in on the first round. So they always encourage people to try again. That'll be a conversation that I have with school committee because there are certainly implications for the capital plan. Um, I would want to think seriously about if there is an opportunity to have some of the costs <coughs> offset through grant funding, I would definitely want us to um, consider that carefully um, because in, just obviously paying attention to what taxpayers have to pay on their own pocket. So when's the next opportunity? So it happens about the same time every year. The invitation usually comes. We submitted this application in, I want to say, I worked on it over the summer, and I feel like we submitted it in September and then notified in December if you're invited in. So it's, it only happens once a year. Um, I could be, I don't have the email right in front of me. I could be off on that timeline, but I think they do it at about the same time every year. So discussing with the, um, just curious if, if discussing with the school committee, are you going to be discussing whether or not you want to go uh, this year at election time to put something on the ballot for the, right. so the locker have, room? We had discussed that as, as an option, but I do want to talk to the school <coughs> committee about what they would recommend being, um, making the most sense in terms mm -hmm. of, of what we move forward with um, and ask folks to vote for. And I talked to the school committee, and either the school committee would then communicate directly with you folks or have me come back and, and talk with um, FinCom and the select board about what it makes the most sense. And certainly hear your perspective as well. Was that both the locker room and the in Unibus? In yeah, it was one application. They don't want to do renovations. I mean, good Lord, they think we take good care of our buildings, and that was years ago, which they ended up giving us uh, money for windows and right. things of that nature. Um, I don't know why in God's name after how many number of years, you know, that they don't want to let us expand or do anything Yeah, different. I think it's yeah. also, it is a very competitive process and mm -hmm. I will look in more detail. I didn't see the email until I was running between meetings, so I haven't read the response in detail. But our goal is always to look at that feedback and then make the next application better. I will not be defeated to this. People will give me their I money. know you won't. I won't be. I have so faith in you. We will step back up to the plate and, and keep trying. Thanks. Thank you. Any other issues you guys wanted to discuss right now uh, related to the tri board? That was the main, main intent. No, I don't okay. have anything. Awesome. Everybody else good? Good for now. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. You run back over to the school now. It's <laughs> <laughs> done with Pro they oh, did a great they're job. Done. Okay. So we're going to go home and have supper. That's oh, good. Good. Now. Thank you. Um, since we have uh, people here from both CPA and municipal building, it looks like, uh, wanted to uh, kind of collectively have a meeting to discuss the the uh, possible use of the Goodwin Memorial Library for future municipal use. And uh, I don't see all of 
Are you the only representative, Dave? I guess. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know if anybody else was coming. Well, Tim, Tim said he was going to try. Oh, he was going to try? Yeah. Okay. I um, can wait a little bit if we think. Here's you, Tim. Oh, here he is, right here. Here actually. he is. I, I was actually going to ask you guys to kind of start. You guys met with the planning board last night? Last or night, yeah. Did you? And what, what was and, kind and of the report right. from that? Bill's in the building. Was he coming to the meeting? I think he was headed home. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, was he? Yeah, he's, he's here for another meeting. Oh. Yeah. Well, uh, Park and Rec and Planning Board both um, seemed like they would be happy to go there because mm -hmm. of more space. The only requirement that Planning Board wanted is where their Good offices. Yeah. yeah. They needed to have their storage for all their plans, files in their office, not like three locations. Because we're also thinking you'd need a meeting room over there for planning board. Or, and that meeting room would also um, serve as an activity room for the park and rec. Uh, that was the conversation last night. And then they also brought up um, maybe Conservation Commission could be there as well. Yeah, did they did they talk about actual repurposing of the building at all, and and you know applicability to zoning bylaws and that kind of thing? Well, we talked about putting in instead of um, on the second floor sectioning it off, say with two by fours, maybe uh, cubicles, mm -hmm. um, and then we said we'd get a, around um, the seismic requirements, right? Regs, and then. Um, the issue is no bathroom on the first floor, um, so we'd either have to put in a temporary bathroom or go with plans that were drawn up years ago with an elevator on the north side with bathrooms to kind of be a, an addition. That way it would service all three floors and it would handicap accessibility to all three floors and use it as need be. But the um, electrical needs to be updated. You got knob and tube in there, and the ceiling on the first floor is uh, falling down, and uh, that needs to be taken care of before people move in. So there is money to be spent either way, but it could be somewhat a little or a lot and get it done and be ready to go. Is the floor okay up on the third, second floor? Was the floor okay? <laughs> yeah, it's structurally sound. It can take the loads. It, the problem is the ceiling's loose yeah. from the from the floor system. So mm -hmm. we're we're trying to keep the use uh, to a minimum, mm -hmm. so we don't compromise that ceiling. Mm -hmm. At some point, this is a good time to do it in two phases. You know, get get. I think we we had a really really good uh, meeting last night. Some really good thoughts and suggestions, and who could go in there and where they can go, and and we can probably do it in, in two phases if mm -hmm. we get the money for that second phase. Mm -hmm. But certainly, not having the elevator limits the use mm -hmm. of it. And we do have a really nice building over there, mm -hmm. and it'd be it'd be sad if we can't utilize it to its best. And the, we have to have some type of accessibility on it. Mm -hmm. but, um, and we had, talked, we, we had talked two weeks ago or sometime around there about possibly doing like a, a town meeting space in that main portion of the library. Yeah. Was that still discussed last, yeah. last night yes. or was that? Yeah, yeah the whole I thought process was to um, have the, the main floor mm -hmm. as a meeting space for everybody. And it could be um, used for park and rec too, for some of their uses. So, the 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 main discussion was, well, who would function better on what floor, and how how could we utilize it the best? Certainly, um, really, it kind of changed yeah. throughout yeah. the this discussion because of um, planning board. They they wanted to try to keep all their plans together mm -hmm. with them. So um, the suggestion they had, they had quite a. F a dead floor load for the um, second floor with all the files. Like Tim said, well, you'd have to put it on the outside walls or go in the basement. And they're happy either way. They they really didn't care as long as their files are within their office area, and then the first floor could be their meeting space. Mm -hmm. There's enough room down there too to allow Jenny Park and Rec. 
to utilize some of that space too. And then she can have an office upstairs. Maybe, maybe we can even have um, conservation over there. We haven't talked to conservation. Mm -hmm. but those are the possibilities. Well, I think it's a good idea to try to get them over there since they're not full time here, and those mm -hmm. departments that are full time that need to be in town hall probably be a better use of this building mm -hmm. versus part time. Well, and they also just from a workflow standpoint makes yeah. an awful lot of sense. So, are we going to have to move TV5 again? No. They're going to stay, right? Okay. No, TV5 is very happy that, where so they're at. Well, good. But nobody mentioned it, so that's why I'm asking. Yeah. It's, well, good, <laughs> it's good that you brought it up because, but. <laughs> Actually, I went to one of their meetings and they were they were pretty happy with where they good. were. Good. So. Yeah. Well, well, the, the good one is uh, the old library is under renovation for knob and tube and uh, ADA accessibility and all the other things that you talked about. Are we going to have to move uh, have the media out of there? No. We felt that we could keep them there while most of the renovations are being done. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, because of the thought process of uh, creating the offices upstairs. It's not actual building, it's going to be a modular system. And we talked about security there, how we can keep security between the different offices. So everybody was very comfortable with a modular type of office system um, and partitioning it off. And then, you yeah, know, so it really probably was, in my opinion, in the 30 years I've been here, probably one of the best meetings we ever had. <laughs> yeah. uh, it was shocking. Everything just worked, huh? Yeah. For the, uh, sounds good. For the basement, I know that the Park and Rec needs storage, and we need climate controlled record storage for Town Hall because we're running out of space here. So just in the plans, things to think about, just the yeah. secure storage area. And, that, and, and we all felt that that could be all accommodated over there. Um, so our thought process is to get our uh, Larry Tuttle from Architectural Insights to come on over, evaluate the building, um, talk to the different departments, s and put their needs together and get something on paper and then we can present it to you. And you'll have some budget figures so we can have phase one and phase two. And then we make the decision on how far we want to go. But it would be a shame if we can't get full accessibility over there. And Bill Dwyer actually brought up a very valid point. You know, you want to make accessibility, even though that they're they have the ability to go down the basement right now, maybe at some point some one of the members might not be able to do that. So do you want to limit that? So we have to look at that as a, a future goal to try to make sure that we have full accessibility for the for the. If it's a, if it's a public building, layers. it needs to be accessible to all three levels. Exactly. Yeah, it's just the right thing to do. I mean, that's, that's right just thing. what you have yeah. to do. I mean, that was one reason I, in a previous meeting I was thinking we should be having a meeting space there that is accessible because this this meeting room here is tr not truly accessible. I mean, we have an elevator, but it's. Problematic and we having have a more space. Vertical space. lift. Yeah. Yeah. When was the last time you rode that? I I've only <laughs> seen people get stuck in it. I've never <laughs> ridden it myself. <laughs> um, it's scary. So yeah, I mean, we, it would be great to have something that was accessible and where the TV cameras and those kind of things could kind of permanently be installed and not have to set them up, take them down every meeting. So one one of the things that I kind of am thinking about. This is my opinion only. Um, we could put a bathroom in there on the first floor, which would be on the north side, I guess we're talking mm -hmm. right? But when you do that, you kind of mess up the room, especially, you know, it's nice woodwork and whatnot. And we're going to spend X amount of dollars on a handicap accessible bathroom. And then in, what, two, five, ten years down the road, you're going to go and put in a, a real elevator with real bathrooms, and there's money thrown down the, basically down the drain. So, you know, um, I'm pretty conservative, but I don't want to see my taxes go up, but I'd rather do it once, do it right, versus uh, doing it twice. So it, it, it'd be good to think about what we really need for the town, and uh, we got to do it, we got to bite the bullet, I guess, at some point. And it'd still be a few years down the road by the time you get funding and design and all. And it's not going to be yeah, any cheaper. 
No, well, sure. I was going to say, too, that's a good lead in to CPA being here and kind of consulting with you guys and seeing what is the best path to move forward. You know, do you see this as a CPA eligible project? Would it be good to do it in phases, a design phase and leading into more of a construction phase? Kind of how, how could how could we leverage CPA to work on a project like this? Or is it possible? I don't know. It, it, it's, it's, de it's definitely possible. Yeah. It depends, you know, on what the work is going to be. Uh, certainly the planning aspect is CPA eligible. Mm -hmm. You know, the architectural study, uh, CPA money can be used for that, for, you know, receive money. Um, then the actual construction, it depends what you're doing. You know, if you're rehabilitating, if you're restoring, or if you're preserving, then CPA money can be used. If you're repurposing, if you're adding, if you're, I don't know what, you know, putting up new ceilings, then that's probably not eligible. But the ADA compliance is eligible, right? I'm not I'm pretty, sure. I, I think it, that, that it's might explicit. Yeah, well, it's for public housing, yes. But for public buildings, I don't know. But like the wiring upgrades, as far as preserving the building for safety, life safety issues, how about that? Uh, I, I don't know. I'd have to check that out with the coalition, but I think probably not. Well, didn't we already get CK money to do the electrical yeah, for the library? Yeah. Why did we get back? Uh, that right. was given back. Yeah, yeah right, but we, we got, got it. approved first, in the first yeah, place. Right, so it was eligible. Right, right. So, so I'm not sure. Maybe you know, these are just some of the things that you need to, you know, if we make a list for you to have you check into mm -hmm. to see if we can. Right, right. All I can do is work, work with the people on their applications and check and with Boston to see if they're permitted and work through the process. And have you folks written any grants for some? For a project like this, CPA matching funds, you matching mean? funds type thing. I'm not sure I understand I'm your question. Well, we, if if we took the CPA money, X amount of dollars, towards this project, and we we were to write a grant for this project to, to do it all at once, not you know, piecemeal and do it tw twice, you know, if if at, all, if at all possible to get any grant money for this, historical preservation or conservation? Um, well, the pots of money are different and the requirements are different. I mean, certainly you can use grant money and CPA money together yeah. on the same project. I, don't, I can't recall us ever doing it, but I, I can't imagine that that's not that's not possible. That's, that's not permitted. Yeah, we did it with the uh, cemeteries action 10 years ago. Right, right. Linda, can we borrow against the CPA money for projects? Yes, we can. Oh, yeah, you can, can borrow. Use. You can borrow against the town surcharge portion, mm -hmm. and but not okay. the state portion. Eighty percent. There's a percentage, like eighty percent or something. Well, we're putting in and more than the state is now, so correct. Uh, that will change. change. Got it back. Um, yeah. In fiscal twenty one, it's going to change back. Well, well it, it well the state's is going to increase. I don't know. I don't know what the relative it was. It, it had waned so down. Right. It had gone down, and uh, actually, this the one we just received was actually a little lower than last year, but mm -hmm. it is supposed to go up uh, next year. Okay. But borrowing it uh, against it with a, a pain with a plan that it be paid out of CPA is something that um, David and I have spoken with David Eisenthal, and we would like to schedule something to meet with CPA and have that something that is at least that you're aware of, uh, that we're all aware of how that's another tool that we can be used. Um, and probably the best time to talk about it is before we have a specific project. That's what we were thinking. Let's talk about how it works and how we can leverage what we have into something more. So we do have a, sort of an underlying um, plan on how we can move that forward a bit with the CPA, although we haven't spoken to you yet. So we, we, <laughs> we, haven't, we haven't discussed borrowing in quite some time, mm -hmm. two years maybe. Our last discussion, I would say the committee was unanimously opposed to it. We, we, like, we like spending, but we don't like borrowing. Okay. Um, but uh, as, a, as the chair, I would be happy to bring it up again 
and uh, approach it with an open mind, for yeah. sure. I think it's worth a revisit to yeah. hear from someone outside of town how others have used it and what it could, uh, perhaps how could it, how we could expand into larger projects than we'd imagine. And you, you, you doesn't mean you have to go with it, but I think it's worth hearing. Um, well, certainly, if we can that. use CPA money for architectural um, design sure. or what we need to do for the building, um, and then see what we need, how much money it's going to be to do the repairs that we want to do to the building, and see how we would fund that. Yeah. But it certainly wouldn't hurt to explore that opportunity when you have you know that amount of money sitting there, and if we yeah. can borrow and use it as. Uh, Call it, uh, leverage, leverage um, then you know that wouldn't be a bad mm -hmm. thing. It's not that the money wouldn't get paid back or having it as a back right. to, the, to the borrowing. Yeah, yeah. and the source for paying it back is next year's CPA money, mm -hmm. so it's yeah. not going to uh, impact taxes. Right. Ted, you had a follow up? Yeah, um, certainly we all realize that Goodwin is a very historical and very significant building for us. The Municipal Building Committee would really like to have the CBA be part of this whole process right from the inception and like have a liaison from their group mm -hmm. and maybe a liaison from our group work back and back with the two different committees to go through this entire process from now, from day one. Yeah. So we're not going through a tremendous amount of steps, getting all this stuff done with regard to design and, and uh, budgeting and everything else and find out, well, if we, we might not have the ability by the way we're going to get the CPA money, it would be helpful to be to work together with you, Andy, right from day one here and come up with a, a design or the whole idea of how we can mm -hmm. plan. use CPA money for what we we are looking I'd to do. I'd be happy to come and talk to the building committee. Yeah, I think that would be extremely helpful yeah. because yeah. what we've been doing in the past is we go through our steps and yeah. present it to them. They go, "Wow, yeah. <laughs> wish we knew about this." Right. All I know is I, I don't want to happen to the good one, what happened to Russell School, exactly. where we can't make a decision and yeah. nobody wants to here, here. chip in on the money or kind of think outside the, outside the box to get this done and then have another $30 million problem on our hands. Mm -hmm. So I think the town needs the space and we should make use of the building while it's still in good condition. That's mm -hmm. Yeah, Amy, before this meeting, very kindly gave me the CPA due dates this year. It sounds like it's January 10th and January 13th are are those review dates or the, due dates? The 10th is... Or is the submission date? Is the submission, submission date? date? Right, which is a Friday, I think. This is a Friday? Uh, we're having three meetings this time, not two. Okay. Uh, if anyone from the committee shows up. I think. And we ask that... So it, it, it's been good that someone from whoever does the yeah. proposal comes to all three, usually. Or, well, it depends, at least two. Yeah. So when they come and you give a presentation, that's great. So then... We understand it and then but when we go to vote sometimes there's questions, questions yeah. so someone there has to be there to answer the questions otherwise it falls flat mm -hmm. so um, yeah. we so so just with that in mind you is there any chance we could put something together for this design phase for that time period I mean it's only a few weeks away so no, it's not really other than saying hey we, we want to um, do something with uh, the architect that we have on board other than that, there's not much we can present by that date, for sure, other than let's try to do something. Would you be looking for money to do the architectural study, or do you already have that on board? We have some money. So. But if we can use CPA money. To do a, a, a complete architectural study of all the options, right? Couldn't that be, that proposal be ready for? I mean, how much would be needed to, yeah. how much was needed for that? How formal, I mean, if they say they need $50,000, is that, it, what? and don't have a big description, is that is that I, enough no, to get it passed? Or? You just go to the architect and you ask them, right, how much does it cost to get the study? <coughs> well, you come to the CPA. And in that's order for him to do that, we've set up a meeting, hopefully next week, to start the process. He has to go through the building. He has to then bring in his experts that might be needed 
and it takes a while then to, to go through that, that entire together. process. I mean, it's not something he can go say, oh, you're going to renovate, it's going to, it'll cost you X amount of dollars for me to do that work. So just, just for clarity, I just want to, so you're, you're asking for proposals to be submitted on Friday the 10th, and then you guys are meeting on the 13th or whatever it is, right. and then you're going to have a few? We will, it depends on how many proposals we have, right, Andy? Yeah. 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 And well, so, so we have the two meetings, and then we vote on the third. Right. Also, the third of and, and why is that? But why so far yeah. in advance of the May 7th or whatever? Uh, or? That's based on the town meeting timeline of when uh, warrant articles need to be submitted. But there have been many times in the past where we put a placeholder on there and we don't have the specifics yeah. pending a vote of various committees and then we pull the article. I mean, is there any. So I understand why you guys scheduled it that way, yeah. but I mean, would you be open to scheduling a meeting a little bit later on for a project like this if it warranted? It was warranted? Uh, I'm willing to consider it. Yeah, you know. One of the strengths of our committees is that we only meet four times a year. So, uh, so in the spirit of teamwork and cooperativeness <laughs> for the taxpayers. Did you, yeah. say, so did you say that was the strength of your <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Uh, I'm like so happy to spend the money if you don't talk about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, wow. But yes, we have made accommodations for late entrance and emergency proposals. And we have in the past and we're happy to do it in the future. I mean, I don't think we meet again until the 8th so that of January. Of January, so that's two days before the due date. I don't know if that would be. I don't know, David, if there's flexibility in the timeline, we can yeah, the only, push everything back. The only, the only uh, inflexible thing is that they need to post a week before town meeting, so right. they need to be posting on, what is it, April uh, 29th or something like that. The rest of the deadlines are self-imposed. <coughs> exactly. Yeah, self-imposed, yeah. just yeah. to keep everything moving along. Right. Okay. So All right. Well, if you think it would be helpful for me to reschedule the meetings for later in 2020, I'm happy to do that. If you have a suggestion, I, how long do you think? If you're you have a I, meeting scheduled, with we're the getting architect. together with Larry on Thursday. Okay. And I can pressure him to give us a time frame of how he. We told, I told them up front, this is, this is a hot priority and we need to get something for town meeting. Yeah. I will get a, get a time frame on that. I so, think we can do it. So next quickly. Friday, can you let yeah. myself or David know and yes. then maybe we can communicate with Andy and see if we can schedule certainly. a harder I'll date? Certainly. Does that sound me. good? That does, sounds is that good. okay with you, Andy, or do you need a decision no, no, sooner? I, no, I can, I can set the meeting days whenever okay. I want, basically. Okay. So, so that'd be fine. Okay. Or, yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, thank you for yeah. accommodating. And I would encourage anybody who's interested in submitting a proposal to call me beforehand yeah. and talk about it. Because there's, there's the, the new pre-process, <laughs> which is designed to avoid the, you know, we worked hours on the proposal and the committee says no. Uh, sometimes it happens anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I've held applicants and the committee still said no. But, um, uh, yeah, I'm happy to talk to anybody, even if it's a crazy idea. Uh, maybe there's a way to make it work. Okay, thank you. Uh, any anything else on, on that you guys have? Yeah. Anything else? No, I don't think so. Sound good. So I'll no, I'll I'll bring up something that's probably not on, well, it's not on the library, but um, you guys need a couple of lights for parking across the street. We've been t talking about a um, parking lot, but that's getting pushed down because we didn't even have money to uh, design that. Um, but really, it's quite dangerous crossing the street. Especially when it's raining out and there's yeah. glare on the road. Um, so a couple of uh, street lights, there's two poles, be really safe for everybody mm -hmm. coming to any of these meetings. <laughs> Gee, if you're a professional at the street lights <laughs> by now, aren't you? I, I swear, John, I'll call out. <laughs> 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 Yeah, we're going to have I guess we'll get our source. I think we can look into it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you for So, street that lights over, yeah. over here right in that, across the street yeah. parking yeah, lot. Yeah, that little okay. parking yeah. lot. Because we've been, you know, like the library, we were meeting the other night and it was raining out. 
and you know people were crossing over and then you know parking flying around the corner it, it's it's dangerous. It's dangerous. I, I think there's yes. there's a pole right in the corner there, and I think there's another pole. Yeah, there is two, so two, two poles. Which way? They're capable of putting them up. One's, mm -hmm. one's a new pole when they did Room 9, I think. Right. It's, yeah. yeah, I think well, it's The possible. library used to illuminate it. I'm not sorry. The the church used to illuminate it. Those lights are gone. Yeah. So we need we need to get something out there. Yeah. That's yeah. what I'm crossing yeah. over. Yeah. Call Gary. Call Eversource and uh, uh, Chris Okafer this week. Right. But it's probably not going to get in until after yeah, several yeah. months. No, I'll make a motion that we pursue um, adequate lighting for the designated town parking across the street. Second. Uh, just a question, do we have to have any kind of hearing to put up a street light like that, or should we? Well, this is just to start the process and then we would. But we don't have any houses that are close by that would really, it would, it would affect. It's just that one that's for sale, yeah. really, and on the corner. Yeah. Um, but I don't think we are required to do a hearing for a street light, aren't we? If you're putting up a new pole, you do have to do a hearing, but we're talking about attaching something to a pole. Yeah. Don't. They're both existing, so. Mm -hmm. Well, theoretically, we could attach something to the Russell School camp. Sure. Yeah. So, I mean, well, I maybe have yeah, Chris look at it Chris first. Chris Eversource look at it and see what will work best for something like uh, the LED light that's back here now the, behind the town hall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. 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 I have one question. Since you brought up the parking over at um, yeah. Russell School, this was something that CPA was asking questions about. So, and, and then maybe you could just clear it up. If are you going? Are you doing the um, uh, lock? Are you changing that lot over um, for additional parking for here at the Russell School? Because when um, people asked about money for Russell School, they said, "Well, you don't have a parking anymore. So how can you?" Um, well, the, the the idea of this parking lot came about maybe two years ago yeah. because it's unsafe backing out of right. those spots onto Middle Street. It probably wouldn't affect whatever happens to Russell School because, as Tim pointed out, for that building to become handicap accessible, you'd need an elevator which would be on the west side and parking could be in that lower lot for whoever uses if there's additional parking needed. Um, so that lower lot will still be attached to Russell School? Well, that lower Those lot are the will things be we have to work. Oh. It's yeah. just, it's thoughts. Yeah. That yeah. I think well, once you put the parking lot in, it will, it will be utilized by Russell School if we do have future plans for it, so. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of questions that, with CPA yeah. when that, when that I came know up. we talked about it at, at a couple of your meetings originally. Right. Well, we desperately need some safe parking for this building even the church and everybody oh, in I this agree. area. Yeah. Uh, it's got to be done as someone. Someone's going to get killed there. Oh, I think the parking's good. I just didn't know if it was going to limit the what you can do no, with Russell School because of it. Yeah, we talked about that last night, too. Uh, the, the the consensus was we nobody really felt that it would be a big detriment in whatever we do with Russell School. Mm. Um, even if even if we did that as partnership, it wouldn't be a detriment on on its future use. But we, we have to look at our use as a priority. We have serious problems. And the, the select board wanted our committee to have a subcommittee to look into Russell School the possibilities, and that committee has been formed. They had one meeting, right? You guys are on there, and um, so they're they're moving forward on that. So we really don't know what the possibilities are and they're trying to come up with something for the board and then but the parking lot was kind of a thing for safety and all the people that use this because even like today it's jam packed out there and there's not many people here. So mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, great. Thank you all for coming in that discussion and let's hope we can get this on for uh, town meeting. Yeah. Got one more thing, Andy. Can I give a quick update on the CPA project about the old maps? Yeah. Um, uh, you remember uh, the town meeting voted $500 to get a preservation plan for the old maps that were in a drawer in Tim's office. And um, the uh, I brought them up there and they took them out of the plastic and they inspected them. They said they were in pretty good shape. Uh, that mostly they had to undo some previous conservation efforts. Uh, 
and their plan, their preservation plan in a nutshell is put them back in the drawer um, and not to display them and not to show them. Um, uh, so that's going to be the plan, I guess. Make copies. Uh, well, they suggested making copies and showing those, but you can't use CPA money for copies. Um, so I think it's $4,000 to do the actual preservation work. Um, I would be happy to submit a, a CPA request for this coming town meeting for the $4,000, but that means we'll have to wait until after town meeting to pay the museum to do the work. So I was hoping that we could find a way to pay them sooner and have CPA pay the town back. Otherwise, they would just sit in the museum for, what is it, five months? Which the museum said was fine. Uh, but uh, those are the two choices. Yeah, I don't know. Do we know? So, so the, the department head meeting today, uh, I presented to the department heads the uh, pots of money the, that uh, had not been expended for various projects. It's a long list, a uh, lot of money. Um, I so I've just gone through all the charts of accounts looking for money that four thousand dollars. And I don't have an answer for you right now. I did not find something that just jumped off the page and said, this is what we could use this money for. Okay. So, so oh, I, do have a, I do have a placeholder on the warrant okay. for $4,000 for this project. Uh, I will continue to look at the chart of accounts. Linda and I work closely on this, and I'll see if I can't find the, the money you're looking for. Okay. Of course, I can't guarantee that the CPA committee will approve it and town meeting will vote yes. But I can't imagine they wouldn't. Since they so you're asking us to it. front four thousand dollars with no guarantee. Mm -hmm. Great. No, no, no. I'm not I'm not asking you to front it. I'm just saying it's either that or wait to yeah. get the maps back. Okay. Great. Yeah. How much Thanks. was it to copy it for a display? Um you know, I don't I don't remember. You know, they were uh, high-resolution digital yeah. copies. And they were framed in aluminum, and they were going to be beautiful. But it's it's, it's new. It's, it's, it's like the light art. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we talked about showing, displaying them at, at the new library in the yeah. history room, but you, just, you can't do it. Well, it'd be good to know how much it would be to take a photo of them or whatever, so we could maybe reproduce them in the future, you know? I bet Fort's yeah. library might know, because they do that over there all the time from Calvin Cool and John. I'll take care of it put it on scanner. Are. I don't think that <laughs> you need to run that through the scanner, <laughs> <laughs> unless you don't want it anymore. <laughs> all right. All right let's we're going to move, move on, on off this topic, just because we have a lot yeah. of stuff to go to, so. Quite honestly, we need to find a place for them, though. Okay, yeah. We really have to figure this out. Um, it is something that is so unique that we should bring out every once in a while as a unique thing mm -hmm. in the Hadley House so people can see the originals. But yeah, they, they need to be kept in a dark spot. Well, the, I'm sure the museum is probably the best place for now and right to now decide what we're going to do with them. It's fine right. there. Yeah. Yeah. It's better than my drawer. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 Okay. 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 Thank you, everyone, on that. Um, so we'll go on to um, we have a thing here for adult use marijuana uh, earlier in the year we agreed to yeah. send out another request for a proposal in December we have a bunch of interest in this and so tonight uh, just looking to the board to look at releasing this RFQ for the second facility here in Hadley. So moved. What, uh, how much time do we need to put this out there? Because I know the last time around, we gave a reasonable time period and then we had people come after the fact and say, oh, I needed more time. Mm -hmm. But I'd like to put it out for the basic minimum number uh, amount of time so we can get professional responses rather than people that are just kind of mm -hmm. testing the waters. Right. So I'm, I'm thinking of a six-week uh, turnaround um, uh, because of the holidays. 
Um, that, that seems like the, the, the fairest uh, uh, turnaround time for something like this. Second. Um, there has been a lot of interest in that second license. A lot of course of there has. <laughs> now that someone else has done the hard work for them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussion on this? Well, all those in favor? Aye. 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 And then we have our license renewals. We had one to vote on, Chipotle liquor license. You have more than one. Oh, we have more than one. You okay. have more than one. It's the PDF. Okay. There you go. Eleven. No. Um, yeah. There is eleven. Actually, yeah. there's ten total. I also made paper copies in case it's not rotating. Actually, I need to rotate it. Mine's rotating. Mine's rotating. Mine's rotating. Mine's rotating. Mine's didn't put the So all of these licenses are in good standing. They've all turned in their paperwork. They have no outstanding um, invoices with other town departments and I recommend that you approve all of these licenses. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> so we do have um, eight outstanding. Um, I've been in touch with, I've left messages at least with all of them, um, and most of them are working on it, but they have not completed them yet. Um, as long as they have them in by December 31st, they won't technically be late. Um, and they'll be in your first first meeting, so I feel pretty. We don't cool. mind taking their extra money for being late. Well, <laughs> y'all's original vote was after January first, yeah. but I'm yeah. I'm sure that somebody will be paying us an additional hundred dollars this year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So <laughs> thank you very so much. Always at least one. Always. <laughs> All right. Then we had uh, accounting mm -hmm. services. Mm -hmm. So uh, the treasurer and town administrator have been work. Did she just step out for a minute? I don't sell any liquor. All right. I know that. We can go to sidewalk clearing I've been in case she comes back. I'll talk we'll to you about it. Uh, select board, clarify sidewalk clearing in, in the state layout. Current town bylaws governing snow and ice and sidewalks are found at this web link. So I think we were just bringing this back up because of last week this was a point of discussion mm -hmm. and forget if we were going to send out letters or what we were going to do. I don't know. Was there any complaints? I had a phone call, um, which I'm in agreement. Um, you really cannot expect the homeowners, business people from West Street to the bridge to actually plow their sidewalks after the uh, DOT plows Route 9 and pushes all the snow from the center of the line up onto both of their sidewalks and they need to probably get a plow truck on the sidewalks to take it off of there because it freezes. Do it. Can't do it. You just can't do it. You I know? mean I saw the town loader working out there for almost a full day moving that snow. It around, can't do so. it. Mm -hmm. I mean I, all I'm all I'm saying is I think that the businesses in the center of town because that's where we take care of should not allow their plowing people to push the snow onto the sidewalks yeah. and just keep it within that, their that in okay. their own yards. Not even there. I mean, if they're putting it on the sidewalks, either the owners or the contractor mm -hmm. should be ticketed for it. Yeah. I mean, that's After clear. you've cleared it, yes, absolutely. I mean, I've been plowing Hopkins in the elementary school and mm -hmm. this lot right here, and mm -hmm. I push everything in. Nothing stays out by the road. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, that's, the people don't know how to plow. But I don't think people on Route 9 should be responsible yeah. for the state putting snow on those sidewalks. I agree. I, uh, the only a few more passes, it takes a few more minutes, but there's no reason why they can't clean it up and push it all in on their property. Mm -hmm. The one complaint I had uh, that I brought to David's attention was actually my own complaint of PBTA riders having to stand in the middle of Route 9 because mm -hmm. of the fact that PBATA did not manage to clear a single bus stop from the bridge to the Amherst line. Mm -hmm. And we're talking five, six days, basically they let it melt. They, they were on a couple channels on the news, they don't clean any of it. And anyway. even though they were in here last time asking for additional stops and promising to maintain their stops and everything, and as usual, they haven't done a single thing to maintain their stops. So something to keep in mind next time they come here and ask us for something. Mm -hmm. 
You're it's going to be a huge liability, no, too. PTA it's a liability. Clearing that but sure. we don't own it. They yeah. do. Yeah. Well, I saw somebody trying to go from the sidewalk, trying to get into the bus, fell flat on their face right in front of the bus because they tripped in, in the snowbanks, sure. right. trying to get onto the bus in time. I mean, that was yeah. nuts. So that's PVTA, so they own it. They have well, yeah, but that's also the... DOT for DOT. not clearing Route 9. I mean, right. it's their responsibility for the sidewalks. Yeah, they're responsible for the sidewalks, but PBTA is responsible for their shelters and the actual bus stops of maintaining them and clearing them. They actually have a maintenance, it's a it's an old retired small bus that they have maintenance guys go around and do repairs and things like that, but they just, they're gone during the winter, so. Well, can we reach out to PBTA? And yeah, when I received uh, your your complaint, I reached out to them and made sure that that was in writing. Uh, but it sounds like we need to follow up with uh, with them. They just yeah. don't seem to have performed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else on that? Any votes or anything we want to take or motions? I mean, there's not much. So if you want writing a bylaw, if you want to do a fine, <laughs> your your local bylaw right now is underpowered. It's not going to do the job. It's so we would, uh, if we want to get to a situation where we're finding people or businesses, um, we need to bring something to town meeting. So can we send a strongly worded letter in the meantime to those that are blocking the sidewalks here by the center of town? For sure. A, remar yeah, a reminder to most of the businesses. Yeah. you check out like Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And the basic gist of that is just please don't plow your snow into the sidewalk. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And maybe for a town meeting, we, if, if they don't comply for the rest of the winter, maybe that's something we need to approach. Mm -hmm. uh, along with that one complaint, I just had one more from here to the post office, but there was only one. One person that walks to the post office too. So, but you that's here from Tent Hall. No, from the, uh, the sidewalk that goes from the Middle Street Library. to East Street. You, did you just say only one person walks? No, only one person complained. Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> there's a little more problem. Like, how would you know? I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure I will get more calls <laughs> after this meeting. But <laughs> I have one complaint. Somebody does walk to the post office. Sure. Down yeah. the sidewalk from Middle Street to East. Street. Right. Yeah. And they couldn't get through. Yeah. Uh, and that's off on the shoulder. There's a buffer between the mm -hmm. road and the sidewalk there where we've, we've done in the past. So. We used to plow, plow to E Street. Mm -hmm. yes. We used to plow all the way to Spruce Hill. Mm -hmm. The sidewalk was all the way to Spruce Hill. Mm -hmm. Well, I will say, though, it's surprising after two winters now of not doing the sidewalks on Route 9, other than few complaints every year. Yeah. Typically they're by the same people that are affected and PBTA riders and, and people that tend to run. There hasn't been very many complaints about it. Unfortunately. Actually I noticed some of the people that have bought property off some of the older folks in town have actually snow blowed and maintained their sidewalk in front of their property now that we're never doing it before down the line along with that from Street. West Street to the bridge. So. Yeah. There's a few parcels that are, are cleaned up. So. Yeah. Okay, now we can go back to uh, accounting services. Treasurer, administrator, I've been working on uh, PVPC to join our, the regional accounting program. Uh, do you guys want to give us an update where you're sure. at right now? Sure, so I think things are in a good place right now. Uh, I had hoped to have uh, uh, signature ready documents in front of you tonight that's not going to happen um, so we have a plan to go with uh, the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission's uh, regional accounting uh, service through Eric Kinsher from Sagamore Beach um, we are negotiating the scope of work with Mr. Kinsher as well as the price um, and uh, we still need to set up a date for that uh, negotiation. Yes. Uh, Mr. Kinsherf cannot start until March 2nd, so to make that bridge from now until March 2nd as well as to provide backup. Uh, we've uh, talked to Mary Erickson, 
who uh, would like to be a vendor to the town to do the routine accounting. Uh, we have a price per hour. Uh, we're going to put together the scope of services and have that um, that uh, ready for your signatures. Um, because you don't have another meeting in December, I would like I would ask the board to authorize the chair to sign the, the two uh, agreements with the understanding that this would come back at your January 8th meeting to be ratified. So moved. Second. Well, before we do that, do we get certified free cash yet? We have not certified free oh cash. Oh, my God. We it's at the end of the year. So we, we have uh, had uh, Mary Erickson and uh, Susan Golovsky today reconcile the CPA uh, and oh real estate God. issues. So I think that was the last piece that needed to, to happen. Did they reconcile it? I have not had a chance to check in with them because I was in that meeting on the affordable oh. housing. So I will follow up on that. I did talk to Susan. She felt that they were very close and they were going to be able to wrap up. So we'll take that up again tomorrow. Yeah. So she had sent along, she had done a lot of work and sent it back over to Mary and had some things that she wanted to work with together on the phone. Okay. And then Mary wasn't able to come out today. And so right. hopefully so tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Can you set up a flare or something for yeah. the town hall? And yeah. Certification? <laughs> Chief, would you let, get a, let us do a firework here at town hall when that happens? Fireworks? Yeah. You've got to ask the fire chief for that. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, not interesting. Yeah, point the finger. <laughs> <laughs> I've already had the fireworks. <laughs> Let's get the We're looking for it to in. calm down. <laughs> uh, okay. All, any further discussion on that? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you One of the things, that, just a quick backup, though, on the sidewalk thing. <laughs> do, no, but it hasn't to do with sidewalks. It has to do with your fire hydrants. We're not doing a very good job taking care of fire hydrants near people's houses. They're not uh, helping to clear them away. Um, I drive by uh, different areas. I see people have not taken care of them. Please, God forbid, if there's a fire in your house or your neighbor's house, nobody's going to get to that fire hydrant. So, you know, we can only do so much within the town, but we're asking for your help. So please help us to take care of that. So you opened this can of worms with me wasting more of your time, but um, that's okay. <laughs> we didn't. The DPW didn't get a chance to put out the wooden stakes before the first snowstorm yeah. like they typically do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's some out there that I have are seen from last them now. year. Yeah. Um, they did put in two fiberglass markers that are now attached to the actual fire hydrant instead of wooden stakes. They're at the corner of Huntington River Drive and uh, Stockbridge River Drive, where the snowmobile trail crosses right there. Mm -hmm. um, you would know that. Yes. Yes. They've. Uh, They've been ordered for all of the other fire hydrants, that are my understanding. They're red and white reflective. They're like eight feet tall or something mm -hmm. like that. So I think we approved those at town meeting. Yeah. Right? I was just looking to see if that was on the vote or that was approved. Yeah. And so in the next week or so, those should be in. Um, and they'll be getting them up as soon as possible because I've had residents after the last storm that said, I don't even know where my fire hydrant is to start digging. So <laughs> I said, well, sorry. All right. I mean, that was just a yeah. please warning. Uh, there are no fines for not doing it. Yeah. Um, but the fine will be when somebody's houses go up and you can't take care of it. So. so I agree with all of that. And yet the problem is, as in the heavy snowstorm that we had, the street plow comes along and makes it impossible because it's compacted that snow to move it. Yeah. And if somehow they could... You know, I know there are a lot of fire hydrants in town, but if they could just swing in close to it, clean up where they pushed it, it would be really useful. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's... Actually, what we do is days after. Right, right. <laughs> but we usually just make a pass with the front end loaders on one side and on the other side. Of course, where the stake is, the stakes aren't there now, so it's right. pretty hard to see. And yeah. rather than clean them off with a machine, right. break them off. Right. Luckily, everything melted this storm. So. Yeah. While we're on this topic, can I ever have an unexpected <laughs> business item? And I need to get a chance to. Um, sure. John, I think you were you know, <laughs> a, a snowboard issue. I think you should be on your list. That's okay. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure. 
Should have saved it for announcements. Well, should have saved it. <laughs> Only in the middle of the snowstorm season uh, yeah. here. Chris mentioned to me that there's an old V plow. Oh, we got that skid steer, skid loader uh, with town meeting money. Um, there's money left in that budget. What they'd like to do is be able to trade in an existing V plow that hasn't been used in however many years and use some of the remaining money that's in the skid steer budget now that it's been purchased and that traded money to buy a small snowblower to go on the skid steer for better clearing off the sidewalks. And I think John could probably talk a little bit more about that, but we really want me to. Huh? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Okay, so we bought <laughs> this V-plow for the old skid steer that we had. 15 years the ago. There's a V plow on the mini excavator. We have two right? of them. Yes. Yeah. One yeah. hasn't moved or something, no. right? So we tried that way back when. It was buried in the back of the pole shed. Then he bought a new one for the Bobcat, the new skid steer, mm -hmm. that doesn't work either. It's too rigid of a plow. It, it has no use in our, in our town with our sidewalks. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, both of them really should be traded in for a snowblower that, that we probably utilize some of these positions here on Route 9 and West Street, Middle Street, wherever we're plowing. Mm -hmm. uh, I, don't, I don't know who spec to what, but and why we ended up with two of them when the first one didn't work 15 years ago. Uh, but they never changed the design on them, and, and I was lucky enough to try it myself for the first time again, going, this thing isn't going to work, and it didn't. So. so what I'm asking is if I can make a motion that uh, we allow the DPW to trade, uh, since it's town property, one of the, the older V-plow, I guess. Cur uh, That's what he wants to do, trade the old one? Yeah, get rid of the old one first. They're, they're both useless, so. <coughs> Starting with the oldest one, it makes the most sense. And it was a bad investment. And uh, move toward a snowblower with that existing funds. And yeah. can we do that from that article? <coughs> so this is a skid steer article with excess money in it. It's a skid steer attachment. It's an attachment, an attachment to the skid steer. This was borrowed. It's I don't know if it's borrowed money. Is it borrowed money? Yeah, this was debt exclusion, I think, wasn't it? For that skid steer? Yeah. 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 I think it so. Was. I remember voting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, and we'll have to take a double yeah, check I'll have to, the I'll language. I'll have to see the what it is. And mm -hmm. It's really, is it, it's just an list? attachment for, for the machine itself. It's not. Right, so it could be considered yeah. just part of the original yeah. purchase. Usually we write these things so that you can cover attachments and things like that. Yeah. We'll double check the language. Mm -hmm. Uh, part of that motion should declare the uh, V plow surplus property. Okay, I'll make a motion that we declare the old V plow surplus property so that we can be traded and that if okay with the treasurer and uh, council that we use the remaining money toward this lower. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> okay. Joyce, you started it. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 you know, we're here we are at the end of December, so we're, we have a much longer another part of winter coming. So yeah. uh, Originally, when we were getting surplus equipment, yeah, way back when, <laughs> uh, I ended up getting a couple of uh, machines with snowblowers from MIT at one time yeah. uh, for like $100 or something. We had to go pick them up. But uh, the snowblowers worked out pretty well. We, we have used them, and they, they actually bought a snowblower for the, the lawnmower that they use. Mm -hmm. Right now, so they they all they all do work. That's good. All right, North Hadley, all right, North Hadley Village Hall. So, uh, conservation commission met last night. I think Alan was there. David was there. And mm -hmm. what, what do you guys have to report back to us? Yeah, the unanimous this? vote from the conservation commission to uh, release the uh, ball field from from recreational protection. So as soon as I get a certified copy of the minutes. Uh, I will be sending that off to the, the uh, legislature in order to get the, the votes necessary from the House and the Senate. Great. Have, have we completed the actual petition and all the other stuff that goes along with that? Or yeah. We, okay, yeah, so we're ready to go. Just ready to go. Perfect. We don't have to put a match to the building now. Not yet. December 31st, huh? Not yet. Now <laughs> you have a confused look. Is there something you wanted to say? No, I think this is all great. I was okay. very encouraged by what happened at the commission meeting. Good. But there's still that little 
bit of uncertainty about whether the Turka Park can qualify or not. I mean, there's the Turka Park's not even in the about it. I don't know who the, the ultimate arbiter of that is. I, I, if it's the same thing as that happened in Westfield, somebody will sue us. We're not, but the Turka Park's not part of this. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. But it's already in. Because in order to get the legislature to, in order to get the legislature to say yes, they're going to have to see what the replacement, what the replacement acre is, and we're saying it's the Turka Park, and I think we have a good case for it, but there's. An argument on the other side as well, mm -hmm. and I don't know who, who decides that. Maybe the, the, count, the attorney general, or, or maybe they don't do it, anything unless somebody, you know, makes an issue of it. I think we're going to find out. Well, we will find out exactly, and uh, and if it does turn out, I hope it doesn't. But if it does turn out that we can't use the trip Park, then we'll need a plan B. Yeah. Okay. Now, I don't think we have to have it now, but we have to be prepared to get a plan B. Well, the plan B is. Match. No, Match. it's not going to go. It's finding another acre somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> away we go. We'll People are using Zaturka Park for sleigh riding. I'm pleased to report. Oh, they are. It's it nice like a good hill. hill. It's safe. It doesn't go into the street. Let's go. Oh, I, think we I grew up on Hospital Hill, so. No. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you survived. Yeah, that's a good start. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anything else on North Hadley Village Hall? No, we're ready to go. Uh, conservation restriction on the Kestrel Trust. Um, <clears throat> David, maybe you could just, uh, David Nixon can just let us know what this is. It has to do with some language in there allowing public access uh, to the land. All right, so, so this is the conservation restriction that we passed at the last town meeting. Uh, we had uh, sent the, uh, the language off to council, to made a number of changes. Uh, we took the votes, and then after the vote, Kestrel Trust uh, noticed that they had overlooked a provision in the language that, uh, that they found problematic. Um, it has to do on page, well, they don't number the pages, I think it's the third page. Yeah, third page, you'll see some highlights in yellow. Um, and this has to do with granting the public the right to access the premises. And the, uh, as we passed it, the grantor, which would be the select board, grants to the general public the right to access. Um, I'm sorry, I'm, I've got this back, back to front in my mind. Uh, what was passed at town meeting was the grantor reserves the right to grant the public daytime access to recreational uh, trails. So you retain all of your rights in the, uh, the property. But we didn't actually grant. You may or may not grant, but they don't like that language. They want you to grant that right to the general public right away. I floated this uh, proposed change past council. And council says it's really up to the select board that there's no up or downside one way or the other. Um, uh, the chair and I were talking about if you had to restrict access to the conservation land because of an emergency, a fire, or something like that, um, giving away your entire rights to the uh, access to the property may not be the best idea. I'd rather not do it in perpetuity, but I have no problem doing it. So what Paul Gagnon from Kestrel was, was saying was that the way it's written now and the way it was passed at town meeting with reserves the right to grant the intent public access will not be approved by DCR and whoever the attorneys are at the state level because in order for it to be conservation land and public conservation restriction, it has to be open to the public. Yeah. We, we do have the ability to place reasonable restrictions on what happens during that time, and I'm, I need to check on this again, but my understanding is that if there was a fire or some other thing that we had to say, land's closed, you can't go in there. We do have the ability to do that within reason. We can't do it in depth. Mm -hmm. yeah, it can be capricious. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's supposed to be for public use. Right. right. So it's up to you. It's, uh, the council says that there's no up or downside either way. So. So I'd like to make a motion that we change it to the original version that grants uh, 
the general public the right to access the property so that we can get this pushed through to the state. Okay. Second. Any further discussion? Just. Yeah, I just would, I think it all sounds good. I mean, the only reasons I could think of us wanting to reserve the right came more to, you know, somebody's living there or something like that, sure. and then it becomes more of like a police matter. You're, you know, this land isn't meant for that kind of thing. But uh, yeah, so I, I, I think if this is what will give us the <coughs> conservation restriction, if that's the holdup, it makes a lot more sense to me. So anyway, all right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I voted no on it, so I will abstain from this decision. Okay. Okay, and then now, uh, Senior Center Library and Fire Substation updates. We've got a lot, a lot here. So, who wants, <coughs> does anybody want to go first? Joyce, do you want to go first with a fire substation? And I can. We got a we change have, order there. We have a like. change order. I think I sent you all the paperwork today. Um, the change order is for behind the building where there was going to be a grass area and it was kind of small but bothersome behind the, uh, the uh, building itself where it would have to be mowed and taken care of or weed whacked and the stuff going up against the building. So what they decided is that there should be um, uh, a grade around there where they would install um, drainage system which would be rocks or pebbles and they would install fabric and uh, two inch river stone uh, mulch in that area so that <coughs> we wouldn't have to it almost it would become like a patio area um, behind the uh, fire sub fire station so all in all the um, total price on that was eleven thousand four hundred and thirty five dollars and seventy cents so it would be for um, the landscaper, Carl site work on that. Um, we just figured it would be better drainage behind there too and away from the building. Yeah. So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, any further discussion on that? All so those in so this is for drainage, it's not a patio? No, but they're making it an area that could be used if you wanted to put a picnic table there but I mean instead of putting grass in that area and having to think where you know how it goes in between the buildings mm -hmm. over here over at the old you know the other fire station and you got all that stuff going up against the building where well, you're not going to have that behind this building so they actually ended up stoning that in the back of the yeah. existing police and fire station yeah so mm -hmm. that makes a lot more problem. sense to do that yep. okay. okay all those in favor Aye. 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 So we've moved along. We've, um, I think one of the things that we looked at last night also was is that uh, the comments were made about leaving a lot of this building open to uh, weather, and we wanted them to take a look at that and make sure that if you know they're going to have this open before the um, roof gets put on or whatever, they need to start covering it so that you know. It's not going to cause any damage to what's been put up there already. So that was going to be brought back to these people that are building it at this point to see, make sure that they get that taken care of. Um, the concrete slab work is done. The building rough framing, steel uh, stair inside mezzanine is uh, being put up and done. Underground utilities, rough site uh, grading work is done. Binder course is on. So. We're all on, and we still have a contingency of six hundred and forty-one thousand one hundred and ninety-seven dollars. Can you um, yell at Phil or whoever over there to lock their site gate because they've been throwing the lock in the padlock in the middle of the driveway and leaving it there for days at a time? Oh, so I text Bill to run one and lock their gate. I mean, they're closing it, but yeah, they're not locking it. Okay. Will do. Thank you. All right. Do we want to do Senior Center? Jane, do you want to give an update oh, on the concern? Oh, do you I, I need your signature on this. And, uh, I have it. Yeah. Do you have yeah. it? Okay. You I got a copy. Yeah. I have That's a stack of them. I'm yeah. just going to do them at the end. Okay. Jane, do you want to give an update on the construction <laughs> portion? <laughs> Moving along, the um, finished, well, the plumbing is done except the fixtures, obviously. The wiring is continued. The um, 
audiovisual wiring is starting this week and will run through two weeks. The ceiling above anywhere there would be wiring has been insulated and is starting to be uh, sheetrocked. Um, it's really an exciting building to look at. And then I just had a few things update, schedule update in our packet here. Just because of some of the delays on the site, uh, finding things buried in the ground, um, other just you know site-related delays, those kind of things. Forish has asked for a schedule extension request that would move our substantial completion date from March 2nd to April 1st. However, we think that the final completion will still remain at April 29th. We know additional charges for this. It's just purely trying to get everything done in time. And uh, the building committee voted, I think it was unanimously, to accept this change. Nobody sees anything, you know, ill intentions for this change. It's just based on the site conditions. Um, so we will be getting in our next change order acknowledgement of this schedule change. <coughs> but we don't have to, and that will be the complete changeover order. So we have like the PCOs, mm -hmm. so those add up, and then at a certain point you do the whole change order for everything. Just be acknowledging that schedule change in this. So I don't think we need to vote on this. I'm just giving you this notification that we had that slight change in schedule. Do you want to vote on the schedule change so that way, I mean, that's Pretty yeah, I mean, we had 60 days between <coughs> substantial completion and final completion, and now we only have 30 days, but it doesn't, it, everybody feels pretty comfortable with it right now. And a big reason, too, is the paving can't happen until mid-April. Right? Yeah, until the frost. So, um, you know, that, that's one of the big things. <coughs> Do you want to vote for it? Sure, yeah, yeah we, we could vote for it. For, uh, January. Yeah. Sure. Right, motion to approve the substantial completion date change to April 1st. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I think we ought to make it clear too on the sprinkler system from last I week. I wanted to do that too. Yes, I did want to do that. Because there was a yeah. discrepancy there in speaking with the that, fire chief. That was the next thing on my list thank here. You. So thank you, Joyce. Yeah, thank I you. did want to clarify last week if it came across that the fire chief was going around and saying, we need this here, we need this here. It was not anything like that. It was purely. There was some confusion on the design side. Uh, it's, I met with Phil and the fire protection engineers and the fire chief this week mm -hmm. to kind of go through the whole thing. And there are, it, it's a lot of steps between the actual design and the installation. Uh, the fire chief had been given some drawings that were incorrect. And then when he went to look at the site, he noticed that you know, there were discrepancies between the design, what was actually there. So what he came up with were code violations that he found that they needed to do to increase the safety of the building. It was nothing about him with his own agenda doing anything. It was purely meeting code. So, um, so let he's me doing put a this great in, job. Let me put this in, in straight language here. It was yeah. another oversight by the engineer. Is this correct? I know you don't want to admit that, but I, that's what happened. What it sounds like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we need, we need to put this on list. the list for the end of the year of what we're... How much are we holding on this project? We did just get $8,000 back from the engineers. No, for, for the final for the final on this project, how much are we holding back that we we're going to be negotiating with all the final these? Payment. Yeah, final payment. Retainage is usually five yeah. percent. Oh, okay. Okay, so we'll have discussion. Yeah, we can at discuss it at that project. point. So, anyway, it was not the fire chief's fault. It was Thank more you. on the design side. So. Thank you. Anyway, Glad got that. clarify that. <coughs> so, who's got the running tally? <laughs> oh, I've got a list. Don't worry, we're keeping <laughs> track of this. <laughs> I think I have it here somewhere. Um, then we had three PCOs downspout boots, insulation work, rift cut wood doors that the finance subcommittee approved this week. They're all add up to less than $10,000. So um, those we did vote to approve. And I'm just seeing if I have anything else. Oh, uh, yeah. 
one other thing, but we'll talk about that later. Um, I think that's everything. Okay. Is that so, everything? So you just need a vote on the uh, change orders that were already approved? Is that I, I don't know how we're handling that when it's under the amount. I think they're supposed I to bring it to us, right? If it's under ten thousand, yeah. the fi sub finance committee had ability to approve it. Is what okay. we agreed. But then if it got squeaky. to an aggregate amount, it yeah. had squeaky, squeaky clean. With that, uh, if you want to take another vote, yeah, just to sure. Accept the recommendation. I mean, they're only nine nine hundred twenty two dollars, seventeen hundred dollars. They're, they're so small. Amount. Yeah, they're small. The recommendations from the finance subcommittee for at least three, three change orders. I'll second that. And they are okay. PCO 9R1, I'm just going to read them um, mm -hmm. for the minutes, but yeah. PCO 031, PCO 032. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, thank you. Oh, no, one more thing. I'm sorry. There was one more thing. Um, so, we, part of the project is furnitures, fixtures, and equipment. That was all sent out to bid, separate contract. We got the bids back. Um, the low bid was $159,576.44 from Interscape. Um, I believe the budgeted amount was $195,000 that we had in there. And so we just need to vote to enter into the contract with Interscape to provide the, this furniture to the senior center. So are you saying this is the first thing since shovels have been in the ground that came under budget? Everything's under budget. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll to approve that. Yeah. Second. Okay, all those in favor. Aye. 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 All right. I think that's the helpful. Okay. So um, quick update on the library. Um, well, first of all, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't driven by, we have a building. Yeah. So, um, you can see the uh, tariffs at work. So our steel <laughs> steel beams are going up uh, right now, um, based on the update we got at our library building committee meeting the other night. Um, everything's on schedule. Uh, <coughs> you should expect to actually see that that beam work will continue for a while. Um, and they'll, what was explained to us is that they will s immediately start trying to close the building up. Um, so there's a whole process for that, and we'll do the best that they can, you know, given the possibility of inclement weather and all of that. But um, should be obvious that things are moving along pretty well. Um, and we spent far more time talking about the color of the mullions and mullions. Yeah, that was that was a great conversation. <laughs> only to find out that there was more information, and we have to have an emergency meeting to continue that conversation. Um, but all is well in that regard. So, uh, you know, no, at this point, again, we don't have any change orders or anything that need to be discussed. Uh, fundraising continues to go along well. I think the bulk of it was reported at the last meeting, but, you know, uh, more um, contributions are, are rolling in. So that's, that's very positive. Uh, in that so regard. East Hampton Savings Bank went, <coughs> went toward that? East Hampton Savings Bank was a part of it. Um, I think the biggest one so far is People's Bank uh, gifted uh, or is giving us $50,000 over a five-year period, mm -hmm. is that right? Yeah. Um, and yeah, and then, you know, some generous support from the community members and, and local businesses as well. So again, I would imagine, especially the, like the visual when people actually see it going up, it'll remind people. And, uh, so we hope that that positive experience will continue. Um, at the last meeting, uh, we talked a little bit about the library and senior center rental um, agreement but we were talking about this opportunity for the library to secure a hundred thousand dollar grant um, and be um, really predicated on the lead certification and having the solar um, would go a long way in solidifying that so uh, at last week's meeting we talked about I'm going back to the town treasurer to find out what the actual accounting numbers are. So Linda graciously put together uh, that information for us. So it looks like um, in FY19, which is closed, and it sounds like it would be a bit problematic to try to move any of that money around, potentially. No? Well, we would go back into 19 and change those figures. 
what it would be a, a we could a, and the, the amount paid in 19 in fiscal 19 was the three months at the 5650 rate which was almost seventeen thousand sixteen thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars right. so uh, when your question was can we go change can we change 19 no we can't change 19 what we can't what we're hoping we can do is in 20 do a reimbursement to so it would all stay in 20 and the, the end impact would be the same just a technicality mm -hmm. and um, and then you asked if I was sure that we could do this I actually did write to the auditor I sent an email um, we don't really have the, the full level of accounting access that we used to have and we're, I'm trying to I've been trying to get an answer there um, and I did write to the auditor and so hopefully um, we we can be told Sure, even though it was in 19, yes, you can take care of that in 20 because we're, do we're dealing with capital articles and the town's own money that the town has borrowed for these purposes. Um, and you're talking about a purpose that could uh, um, yeah. rightly come under either of the articles in the first place. So I've expressed it as a, um, as a, as a cash flow issue that one, one budget coming in tighter and just seeing if we can do a... Um, a correction at this point, an adjustment within 20 for the 19 expense. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm I, 100% on that, but mm -hmm. that's what I'm going for. So the, the total dollars we're talking about, um, it's mm -hmm. $50,020. So as Linda said, it's the three months from FY19, um, then what has been paid as well as what would be it's expected projected. to be paid uh, prospectively. And so again, you know, I think given given the level of contingency remaining in the senior center, to the extent it looks like it's not going to be harmful to them, and it can only help um, secure that hundred thousand dollar grant. And, there, and on the side of full disclosure, I mean, it's it's possible that we could get the grant um, <coughs> anyway. But why, you know, in my mind, why take a chance? It just seems like a no brainer. Oh yes. So I'd, <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just to <laughs> so I'd like I'd like to make a motion that we effectively change the accounting um, for the rental space paid to uh, the parish center on behalf of the senior center to um, no longer come from the library funds, but be drawn from the senior center building project budget. Second. You said no longer be. Do you also are you going to do a separate motion, or do you need mean that to include also and to effectively and to effectively restate what has already occurred Second. to the extent allowed to the extent allowed right <laughs> right because <laughs> right. if you could come Got back it. and say no can do on that and that would right. okay any other discussion on that all those in favor aye aye aye, aye. all right thank you. Um, we never actually offered public comment. Oh, yeah. Is there anyone here for public comment tonight? Thank you for pitching that. <laughs> Anybody want to say anything? Linda? Um. Thank, and thank you, Linda, for getting these numbers yes. and working through the accounting. I was going to say that after that. I do appreciate that in our current state. Sure. Thank you for. Oh, sure. We have, we have a lot going on. Um, with your not meeting. Um, <coughs> for was it four or five weeks we are spending a lot of money right now and I know that we have the standing policy that uh, that we pay bills based on David mine and the accountant's signature um, I this so this is gonna be a lot more than usual going out over the next five or six weeks so I would ask that Pay closer attention, come on in and take a look at it. We're going to be in this time frame changing accountants. Um, and um, again, wanting to, I know uh, there's a, a $500,000 bill that's going to happen right now and it's not, hasn't been paid yet. So that's something that if you could just check in on those a little more regularly than, than you might otherwise, that would be really helpful. If you could just send us an email when you have a stack. That'd be sure great. That we right, I would, um, yeah, I will try and get them s scanned out as I usually do and, and out you to you. And you don't call everybody, just me? 
notes. <laughs> yeah. I'll call attention to things. I don't know about that. I'll, I'll call attention more than I usually do. Usually <laughs> Jennifer just texts and says, where are you? Yeah. And then, <laughs> then we know that we need to come in. Yeah. With, with hearts and flowers, though, we, it's very gentle. We will work together. <laughs> All right. Okay. 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 And uh, town administrator report. Let's have that. Okay, well, we gave a report last right. week, so not a whole lot has changed. That's okay. what you always say. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, David, what you do tonight. Uh, yeah, no yeah, no you change? Nothing? No, no, no. It, oh, okay. No so. change. There's not a lot of change. Uh, okay. we, we had our final meeting with the affordable housing uh, study uh, people from Pioneer Valley Planning Commission under the DLPA grant. Uh, they're going to uh, submit a final report. We've uh, agreed that there's um, uh, articles that should be presented to the select board for inclusion at the uh, annual town meeting having to do with uh, continuing this project. Um, and uh, so this seems to have been a successful effort uh, paid for by a grant uh, and in addressing some of the issues that were raised jointly by the planning board and the select board. So this is moving forward in a very positive way. Um, community Development Block Grant. Okay, so the uh, application to due date is uh, March 6th. We need to have public hearing two weeks in advance of that. So we're really talking about uh, something that towards the end of February. We've put together a working team uh, consisting of the Senior Services Director, Jane Nevin Smith, the building inspector, a board of health member, me, and a planner from Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. And we'll be setting up a meeting uh, in uh, next week or so to get that application out. Um, still waiting to hear back from Mass DOT about a stakeholders meeting. November revenues are not in yet. Um, we got the tax rates uh, certified, so uh, working with the collector's office, we're able to get the uh, bills out uh, before the uh, December 31st deadline. And now we're working on uh, getting the free cash certified. Um, and then we have a ballot vote coming up on the debt exclusions. On December 19th, polls are open from noon to eight, and that's at Hopkins Academy. Uh, February 4th, uh, budgets and articles are due. February 19th, I'll be presenting my budget. Uh, March 3rd, Super Tuesday primary, presidential primary. April 14th, annual town elections. And May 7th is the annual town meeting. Uh, and we were talking, we were just coordinating the calendars about the public forum for that uh, uh, town meeting. So we'll come up with a date for that. Announcements. I have two. Don't like them at this time of the year, so it's hard. Um, our condolences to Judy Barstow Stone on the passing of her son, Harry. Um, Judy lived and grew up in town here. She's part of our historical commission. Um, she, I also worked with her at the hospital as a nurse. Uh, so condolences to her and her family. Also on the passing of Joe Kowal, um, worked with his wife at the hospital too. Mm -hmm. My husband actually said he delivered newspapers with Joe back in their younger days, so um, Joe grew up in town, went to school here, and uh, certainly he'll be missed by his family and uh, friends, and so condolences to his family. Mm -hmm. His daughters live in town. His daughters live in town, yeah. Uh, one here, lunch with Santa and Mrs. Claus, Saturday, December 14th, 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. at the Hadley Elementary School Cafe. Santa will arrive by fire truck around 1220. And then uh, I also know that, what's up? Stuff the truck. Oh, stuff the truck. And the cruiser. Is then? Yep. Okay, stuff the truck is then as well. <laughs> Bring your own camera and pictures for Santa and the Alps. <laughs> I should have read this before. Uh, <laughs> you did just hand it to me. <laughs> Go ahead. Like. Uh, also on Saturday, uh, UMass Police, Hadley Police, Sunderland Police, 
Uh, I think we'll be assisted by the fire department as well. We are doing an event called Cop on Top from 7 a.m. till 5 p.m. at Walmart, where we will be on the roof freezing. Um, <laughs> we are accepting toys. We are accepting clothing. We are accepting uh, uh, dry goods uh, and canned goods and food, which we'll donate to various different places. Uh, and we are also um, got some really amazing donated raffle prizes that um, all the proceeds for a donation for it to be entered into the raffle will be going to the Special Olympics. So we're raising money for that and we're also collecting items for a uh, donation for toys as, it, as I mentioned, clothing and, and food. Can you give so, an example of an amazing raffle prize? There are, uh, Lauren, her, Lauren's entire office is filled with stuff. It's, it's crazy. There's, there's hotel stays, hotel stays massage. massages. There's, um, I think Sean from Four Seasons is um, doing another one of his uh, Trees. Trees. trees and yeah, there's some good stuff. Well, I saw a blender in there. I mean, I don't even, I don't even know what you get. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, God, you I mean, get it's it's crazy. So we're gonna we're gonna put as much of it as we can. Um, I actually stopped by uh, Dave Bertera's house tonight, a former Hadley officer. He makes those wooden uh, American flags. Oh, yeah. uh, he donated one of those. Um, so. We're going to put as much of it as we can out in front of Walmart, so folks can take a look at what they're, you know, donating for. For the, uh, but obviously the, you know, the proceeds are more important where they go. So. And this is on this Saturday. This is this Saturday from s I think 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Okay. Did you happen to look at the weather forecast of a 100% chance of rain? Uh huh. Okay. Just making sure. <laughs> it's all part of the fun. <laughs> so is it? Chinese I think that's the word I use for sure. Yeah. Fun. Is it Chinese raffle like that, or is it buying tickets? I don't know what that is. <laughs> well, I, ought to, I had to alert you to what the Chinese uh, we raffle have, well, There's two different ways you can do a raffle. Um, the way the raffle laws are set up, we're going to do it in a donation style. So if you donate a certain uh, amount of money, you're entered into the raffle, we'll give you a raffle ticket for it. Um, we can do it another way, but there's costs involved and we have to get raffle permits and all the other stuff. So state approval, state approval and everything else. The um, other Chinese raffle is you buy a bunch of tickets and then you can put them in whatever you want. Yeah. No, I don't think we're going to do that. We have, there's way too much stuff. Okay. It really is. It's amazing. People, I mean, a lot of the uh, stores in, in Hadley, they came through big for us. So or for the Special Olympics. They're pretty good they're stores, win. aren't they? We do not have to be present to win. We will take care of that. We'll, we'll do the drawing and, and we'll notify folks. We don't have to go on the roof. Well, yeah, no, that either. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're buying tickets, stick your name stickers, return yeah. address. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make, make sure you put the right sticker. <laughs> <laughs> the right ticket. What are you doing on the roof? Just yeah, 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 it's just the kind of thing that they do. I'll just go on the roof if, if, if they give me a lift up on the hook and ladder. Yeah. Well, we're, we're still trying to figure that part of it out. That's, when, that's the part we might need the fire department. Mm -hmm. sure how you gotcha. How's our liability insurance? I know, yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and uh, yeah, so uh, you could go to Walmart before or after you see Santa at Hadley Elementary. <laughs> and the time again is 7 to, seven to five. 5. 7 to 5. Okay. And Hadley Elementary, Santa, 12 to 2. Oh, I'm right there. Same day. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the uh, kids. At Hadley Elementary, their Christmas concerts tomorrow at 7 p.m. I know that. The evening one this time, huh? Yeah, well, afternoon too. Yeah. If you want to go at one two. or seven. Oh, two of them. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Nice. Anybody else? No. I was just going to say the uh, holiday decorations are looking great around town. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems to be more than in the past. And uh, Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Christmas to all of you. This will be our last meeting until see you next year. Oh, yeah. Happy New Year. <laughs> all right. So uh, we are going to have an executive session, I believe. Um, I don't know if someone wants to make a motion. Should we go into executive session? For provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining. Um, if an open meeting might have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of this public body, and if we share so to the players, and we are talking about dispatchers. Can I have a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, as chair of the Hadley Select Board, I state that the board has moved and seconded to enter into executive session, and then I state that discussing the matter in open session will have an adverse effect on the town of Hadley. Roll we'll call vote, please. Mm -hmm. 
you're not going to reconvene. Oh, we will yeah. not reconvene in open session. Thank no, you. Ms. Yes. Bill? Yes. Yes. Stanley? Yes. 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 Y